Hi hi. As you already know this week we had the release of Gnome 43. Let's party maybe. <laughs> Thing is, the Gnome releases mean nothing to me because I have daily builds anyway. But actually the whole concept of a Gnome release is a bit stupid or at the best only meaningful for libraries and APIs. Worthless to end user for sure. Settings might say it is Gnome 43, but surprisingly we need to jump to the terminal to discover the real Gnome version. You see, Gnome is updated daily with new features, capabilities, and bug fixes. And every day we virtually have a new release, so you can basically party non-stop. Okay, I'm not in denial, and I admit we have an official 43 release too. I guess you know everything about it, and some of you perhaps running it already. And on a side note, I like the presentation of this page. Kinda follows the rest gnome with the clean surfaces and all those. But this movie isn't about what's new specifically on Gnome 43, but it's about the best thing in Gnome for 2022. To give a few candidates and runners up, it could have been the work for Shell for phones. A very impressive work, not only for the shell per se, but mainly for the GNOME apps that are compatible already with the smaller screens. Courtesy of Libot Waita, of course, that is probably inside the top 5 prettiest UIs for 2022, and definitely a strong candidate for best GNOME project for this year. In the meantime, I only recently noticed some further work on GNOME OS images that are now available for hardware installation. That obviously would be the best GNOME project of all times, but it's not ready yet for a daily box. And by the way, I totally love the developer tree they got. Some OS tree show off. And not to forget the desktop itself, that brings some improvements on design like the device selections from menu. But also improvements on backends like on Wayland and Pipewire, and more improvements on containerization with a better Flatpak apps interplay. And this year, there was a massive port of GNOME apps to GTK4, and especially this month we had the release of the file manager that also comes with an adaptive mode. But the king of all ports, anywhere, was undoubtedly Builder, with more than 3,000 files changed, and around 300,000 insertions and 300,000 deletions. But none of those doesn't make it to the top, because all those are mostly targeting users, and as we know, it is only the developers that matter. It's the developers that bring the users, and it's the developers that make the platform more welcome even for the hardware vendors. Unfortunately, we lost this battle. But we should never give up. Never surrender. As long as we continue to fight, we are not defeated. And no ultimate weapon is GTK, because the desktop toolkit very often can get more important than anything else. And what's great about GTK is the excellent Rust bindings. Actually, GTK is still the only complete toolkit with unofficially official Rust support. What's not that great, though, is the code complexity this combo puts on simple tasks, like widgets compositing. Which bring us to my favorite GNOME project for 2022. So Realm 4 will make your start with GTK4 and Rust a little bit smoother, with easier to code to read and write, and a fairly simple UI compositing logic. There are examples to try, and a Rust book too, and perhaps you can get something up and running inside 4 weeks, without prior programming knowledge. And not to forget, Pop! OS is using Realm 4 to some extent, for their new cosmic desktop. Anywho, on my mind those kind of projects can attract more application developers, and eventually some of them will start contributing upstream to GTK. Because that's where the real problem with GNOME is. GTK needs more developers. GTK needs big projects. And GTK needs Rust. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye.